They say if you give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. But if you teach a man to fish, then he's got to get a fishing license, but he doesn't have any money. So he's got to get a job, and he has to get into the social security system. And pay Creating your own builds in the Division 2, in my opinion, is one of the greatest things you can do in this game. It guarantees that you can be as diverse as you wish to be. However, it is, or does seem to be, very complicated and daunting to new division players or returning division players from people like me who bowed out to like after six or ten weeks it's for this reason that i believe that a lot of youtubers adopt the giving a man a fish approach hell at the end of the day it's content for days but the problem now is especially as we're seeing with um, t3 or the next update all those build videos are going to become obsolete as massive make drastic changes to how skills and talents work as well as what is required to actually use them the stupid part about all this especially with the copy this build approach is that making a build for certain scenarios is not hard it's actually quite simple it's just it looks difficult because of the ui well, what i'm going to do in this video is teach you how to fish but put it in layman's speak so you don't have to sit there scratch your egg win I don't know, I don't understand what's going on, just, just show me what's put on. And as usual, like in all my videos, I'm going to try and do it as quick as possible. We're already over a minute in, so without any further ado, let's roll. In this video, I'm going to build my perfect tech demo from scratch, so you can see my process and then can take that information to create your own fun builds. But before I get into it, if you're a build extraordinaire, if you are an expert at this and there's some information you feel I haven't put in this video, you want to add something, get in the comments and as we say up north, have at it son. For me, creating your own build starts with specializations. In my case, it's a demolitionist. Then you have to decide your play style. Yes, yeah, some specialists lend themselves to certain play styles, but there is no reason why you can't whack a, a rifle or a DMR on a demolitionist and play a tail end Charlie, as I will prove in this video. A quick tip or a quick point before we put this build together. I'd suggest doing some homework on what skills and talents and branded sets are actually available by simply Googling them. I have them all on my phone, which I, I tend to make a list of what I'm after before I go gear shopping. That way I know exactly what I'm looking for. When I'm making that list, I think about how my playstyle is going to mesh into a team. For instance, a tech demo or tail end Charlie demolitionist is designed to sit at the back of the pack, calling out and mopping up flankers, suppressing enemies into cover, allowing my team to dominate the field, providing artillery fire support and picking off long range HVTs that my team hasn't noticed or can't deal with. So with that in mind, as I'm putting together my own list, I'm thinking of using skills like the pulse so I can see the feel better and mortar to it for the artillery support. As for weapons, a high capacity LMG and a rifle is going to help me maximize my suppressing ability and long range support. Now that I have what I'm going to use, I start making lists of what branded gear sets and talents are going to help me the most. I also make a list of backup talents just in case some of the ones that I've originally wanted don't quite mesh together because of the respective talent points it needs to make them work. After a bit of argy-bargy and using the rubber quite often, I managed to get my list together. So for my tech demo, here's the gear and talents I've chosen. For the gear brands, I'm going with Petrov Defense times 2 that's two pieces. That gives me the LMG damage and turret skill power boost. I'm going for three pieces of the Provenance Defense, which gives me the full perks of skill power boost, health and weapon damage boost. And then to wrap it all up in a nice neat ball, I'm going for the Overlord Armament. <laughs> Put my teeth back in, Mr. B. Overlord Armament. Yes, for rifle boost. The talents that I've earmarked that I particularly want is Vital for 20% extra health, Mad Bomber which gives 150% grenade radius, plus grenades that manage to get a killer refunded. Destructive, 20% explosive damage, obviously. 
kneecap. Shooting knees has a 10% chance of causing bleed. Brilliant for long range suppressing. And last but not least, efficient. Using an armor kit has a 50% chance of not consuming it. All those together make a badass tech demo. For weapons, I'm going for the SIG 716 rifle with bread basket, distance and protected deploy. Good for long range HVT capping. And then for my light machine gun, I'm going with the tactical M249 para with ranger, accurate and in rhythm. This is good for laying down suppression fire and causing long range damage, especially with that kneecap perp kicking in. Right, list done. Now what? Well, my friends, it's time to go shopping. Loot shopping can be quite laborious and it, it can be quite repetitive, but the fact you've got something, to, there's an end goal to this makes it more fun. Now, doing dailies on hard or challenging matchmaker for bounties are two of the best ways to get loot however i would also suggest searching the sewers and taking control points too as you can drop a hell of a lot of loot doing these kind of activities and they don't take long at all a really good shopping tip i can give you as well is to deconstruct everything apart from mods that is not on your list you only have a hundred spaces, which will fill up fast if you don't do this. If you are in a team with others, however, rather than deconstruct, try sharing them because it might be something that they're after and I guarantee they'll be much appreciative. I know I was when someone dropped me a Mad Bomber um, vest. I was over the moon that somebody shared that. So deconstruct it on your own, share if you're within a group. Once you've got all your pieces together, it's time to visit your best friend, the recalibration table. This is where your build starts to come together. I know the RT can look quite daunting, but believe me, it's actually basically very simple. Here's what you do. You open up the recalibration table by going to the White House and visiting the correct table, not the crafting, the recalibration, so not the crafting. Once you've opened up the menu, you pick the item you want to modify, i.e. you've got a vest that doesn't have the perk you want on it, so you pick the vest and select the perk that you wish to change. You are then presented with a list of compatible talents or perks that you can add to your item from non-equipped gear. All you have to do then is simply select the talent you wish to have on your weapon or armour and Bob's your uncle. Bish bash bosh, done. There are, however, a few rules you need to adhere to. Firstly, you can only swap out one section of an item. You can swap that section as many times as you wish, but only one section. Secondly, you can only swap light for light talents or perks, meaning that you can't, for example, swap 10% damage for a kneecap. If you're swapping out a named talent, it has to be for another named talent. And the same goes for stats. Another rule, which is actually more of a positive than a negative, if you are swapping out stats, so say you're swapping out a 10% damage stat, if you're swapping that out for a stat that is of higher value, the gear score will go up. And that's the rules to it, it's simple. So once you've done all your pissing about, once you've put all your eggs in one basket, and you're happy with how it all meshes together, it's time to add that final piece of the puzzle, the cherry on the cake, the gear mods. But be careful as the mods can change the numbers on the left hand side of your build, which may interfere with some of the talents you've chosen, as I have found out, because I originally wanted tech support, but I couldn't have tech support because it changed. We'll, we'll put that one to one side. As you can see for, for that mini rant, Making your own builds is not only rewarding, but it can be annoying, especially juggling around all the different stats to make the perfect build. However, like I said, it is rewarding. Now that you know how to make your own builds, there's no excuse on copying others. It is a fun process, a rewarding process. Something you can stand there when someone says, my, your, your guy can last forever. Yeah, well, it's my build. Look how quickly you're mowing things down. Yeah, it's my build. And more importantly, because you know your playstyle, you know the tactics you're going to use, 
you are going to be very efficient on the battlefield. Trust me on this. So ladies and gentlemen, games all creed, that's it. That's how to make your own build. Simple, couldn't be easier. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. Like I said earlier, if you've got anything to add or any information or anything that I've missed or something like that, or even if you want to teach me something, get into the comments and have at it. Thank you for being here again. That's all from me, Mr. B. Ta-ta for now.